Hi guys, welcome back for episode number 18. So I did not do an episode last weekend because it was my birthday weekend. So I went to New York City after Thanksgiving. So on Friday, I left for New York City and got back on Sunday, which maybe was not the best idea because traffic on Sunday was insane. And my birthday was actually on Sunday, which is the 28th of November. And I was stuck in traffic for like, forever so a drive that should have taken like four hours took five and a half hours so I spent most of my birthday just in the car but the rest of the weekend was good and I got to play uh, you know a good amount of games in the last couple of weeks so let's get into the games that I played and the first one I'm going to talk about is Weather Machine so I finally got to play my first Vital Lacerda game um, so this is Weather Machine which is currently on Kickstarter it's designed by Vital Lacerda published by Eagle Griffin Games for one to four players so um, so my thoughts are the thoughts of someone who has never before this played a Vitala Serda game. I have Lisboa, but it's been on my shelf of shame for a long time, a very long time. <laughs> so because um, I, you know, I decided that if I ever play it, I would like someone else to teach me how to play it. Um, so yeah, so Weather Machine is probably the heaviest game I've ever played. Um, I don't know if I can say it's the heaviest game. I mean, it probably is. I've played heavy games like I would consider Bitoku to be a heavy game, Trickerian to be a heavy game, and games like those I have no issues with. So once I learn them and once I start playing them, like halfway through, things really just click and everything falls into place. And I know exactly what I want to do and I know what strategy I'm going for, even if it's a losing strategy, though, in um, and Bitoku, I don't recall my scores, but I don't think I lost very badly. In fact, I think I did pretty decent in Bitoku when I played that. Um, Bitoku, which is designed by, uh, published by Devere Games. Let me just uh, see if my scores are... Um, well, anyway, I guess I don't need to go into my scores. But this game... Um, so I played a four-player game of it. Uh, one of the friends I played with, he has played like all the Lacerda games, so he's very familiar with Vital Lacerda. Uh, the other two had only played one Lacerda game, which is On Mars. Um, so it's one of those two friends who read the rule book, and then we all got together and the friend explained the rules to us. Um, I had set up the board, well, setup and rules and playing took a minimum of five hours. Um, of course, one of our friends has who we were playing with has like serious analysis paralysis, so that might have had something to do with it. Um, so the first play of this game was really quite long. Um, but let me just show you some components, because even though this is a prototype, um, it seems like I don't think it's a prototype in the sense that the components are like necessarily like prototype because they seem pretty nice and finished to be honest. So this board is huge, so I'm probably not going to be able to show the whole board, but like but like, okay, maybe I'll try. Okay, so, so there we go. I don't know if it's upside down or what, but no, it's not upside down. So that's good. And you can see it's a dual layered board. Um, even the back has artwork on it, which is really beautiful. Um, so yeah. So um, there are different areas of the board. Um, so this area here um, on the left side, um, let me move this here. Okay, so this area of the board, I mean, you guys probably already all know this, is where you can get your like government subsidies. So there's like tokens which can give you like bonus actions where you won't have to spend the cost. So you can get those from like this section. You of course need to put down um, these like chemical tokens which you earn from somewhere else on the board here. So here is like where you can get those like various chemical tokens by placing a worker there. Um, a worker somewhere here. I don't remember where exactly the worker went. Um, here is the, um, this is the actual weather machine. So on that side of the board is like the prototype that you're building. So you can place workers there, use gears and chemicals to build a prototype. And then at the end of each round, you're going to see if the weather machine actually like operates or whatever. And then you're going to like maybe do some stuff here um, so you can do some stuff here and then maybe get some benefit if the weather machine did operate in that round. Um, so yeah, I would say that that is the gist of it. I don't know how I'm going to do a one minute overview video of this because I don't think my table is even big enough, but uh, we shall see. Okay, so um, so yeah, so 
So I would say that's the gist of it. However, um, you know, I think it's a beautiful board. Um, there's a lot of like thinking to it. Like you really definitely need to think a lot about what you're doing. Um, for me, it didn't really click halfway through like heavy games tend to. Um, oh, this is your own player board. So on this player board, you are going to be collecting books. So there's different kinds of book tokens that you can earn and stuff. And you're trying to get like a Nobel Prize. Like that's one of the ways I think one of the game and triggers is if someone gets a Nobel Prize. Um, what goes here? Is that where are you? Oh yeah, these are just like, you're gonna have just some tokens which um, lets you know how many vouchers you have, vouchers which you will be spending on. Uh, to get various things in the game. Um, you have like your little bots which you will be um, taking out and activating. So on the side of the board you're gonna have like these like tiles which you are going to be adding in which will give you more room for gears and more room for bots which you will then be able to send out onto the board. Um, so this part will be expanding in this way. Um, what else? Yeah. Um, I just feel like the theme and mechanics aren't very like integrated very well in this game. Like I just like for example when I'm building a prototype I don't feel like that that's what I'm doing when I was you know. So like in other games when I'm taking an action I feel like the actual me mechanis mechanism or mechanic I don't know what the correct word is when you're doing that it just feels like you're sometimes doing the action that you're supposed to be doing in the game so like for example abomination like you know I'm going placing my workers and I'm going out and doing stuff in, in abomination the era of Frankenstein and it feels like I'm doing those actions when I'm you know building the monster and activating it like you know dice rolling and whatever like it feels like yes the monster is coming alive like you know the theme and mechanics are integrated really well like in Obsession um, by Dan Halligan you know when I'm sending workers to do different actions and then you have to recycle them because they need to rest like it just feels like you're doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing here I just didn't feel that way and maybe that's why it didn't click for me as I hoped it would like halfway through the game I feel like I need to play it one more time to maybe feel like I don't know feel the connection between the theme and mechanics I don't know how other people felt about it someone I was talking to a couple of days ago about Vital Lacerda games was saying that uh, I don't know if I can even paraphrase him but it's he was saying that actually I don't even know how to put it into words what he was saying but kind of the same thing where like your mechanics and theme aren't really integrated but like the board itself is very evocative of the theme like the artwork which is true I mean the artwork is absolutely stunning but anyway let me just show you some of these components because they're really really nice um so yeah like these books these are yeah like everything is screen printed even in this prototype version which is really nice I had these purple player colors which I really liked here's like a little bot it's cute um, what else? Yeah. Yeah, these are like the subsidy token. Or are these the subsidy tokens? I don't know what those ones are. I can't remember. Then there's these, these cardboard gears. I know that um, in the Kickstarter you can upgrade to, you can pay for the add-on metal gears, which look really cool. But even these cardboard ones are nice. I don't know if um, they'll be made thicker. Um, what else? Yeah. Yeah, more of the same, just kind of components. Oh, these are like the chemicals. So there's like different types of chemicals that you collect and use for different things. Oh yeah, so that was Weather Machine. Um, I don't know, I definitely do feel like I need to play it again to really feel like, to try to understand what's going on. Oh, and there's, um, yeah, I guess there's like these tiles. Oh no, I should have turned off the heat. So the, there are this, like different weather tiles that um, are above the prototype and you know different ones might come out um, but yeah I guess that's really it um, yeah so I guess I don't really know how I feel to be honest I guess I need to play one more time before I really get a feel for this game if you guys have played Vital Lacerda games before tell me what you think I mean there's how I'm feeling like a common feeling um, I don't know yeah, so that was that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to play it though. So I think that's, you know, it was really awesome of them to send it to me so that I could play it. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe a bit too heavy for me. I don't know. 
Um, so now I'm like kind of rethinking about the spoa, whether or not I should play it or just sell it on. I don't know. Um, if you guys play Vital Lacerda games, tell me which one is your favorite and why. Um, like, you know, go into the details about the weight, I guess. I remember when um, I was talking to the CEO of uh, Eagle Griffin Games, he did say that he thinks Weather Machine is one of the more accessible Vital Lacerda games. At least I recall that's what he said. I hope I'm remembering that correctly. Um, yeah, it just kind of went over my head at times. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I do feel like I need to play again. But, um, you know, I was talking to one of my friends about the play that I had of this game. And he was saying that maybe it feels like w the one who read the rule book. Um, he said that maybe it feels like maybe I feel the way I do because they were all, the three guys I was playing with were kind of taking my turns for me. So like when it would be my turn, I'd be like sitting there like, oh gosh, what do I do now? And then like, you know, one person might point out one thing in the board, another person might point out something else and be like, oh, maybe you should do this or maybe you should do that. Sometimes I would take their suggestions. Sometimes I wouldn't. Sometimes I'd be like, no, I think I want to do this instead. But maybe if I had been entirely on my own and they had not been suggesting things to me, maybe it would have clicked halfway through like other games typically do for me. Um, you know, I feel like I still understood the things that I was supposed to be doing. I just don't think I've, I understood what a good strategy is. I don't think I understood, um, yeah, I guess maybe that's a, I, I really need to play it again to learn what a good strategy might be rather than just understanding the actions and what they do, but not really understanding which one I should take at which time. I mean, I feel like I started out okay, but then it was like, like halfway through and towards the end, I was like, yeah, I just, I don't feel like I'm really progressing all that well. Um, I wonder what the scores were when we finished. I think I lost pretty badly because I don't think I had any like end game bonuses. Let me just check. Let me check because I think Board Game Geek records the scores once I put them into the app. Do 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 stats. Um, is it in stats? Uh, do 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 do. All time plays. Um, but um, um, um. Oh wow, uh, maybe that's not it. Uh, sorry, I know I'm wasting your guys' time. Okay, <laughs> let me see, let me see, sorry. Just one second. Uh, where can I find out? Oh my gosh, is there a way for me to see my stats easily? Okay, here we go, maybe. No. Plays. How do I see plays? Okay, I clearly don't know what I'm doing and I'm wasting your guys' time. Okay, I don't think I lost very badly. I think the score, my score was not too far behind everyone else's, I think. I think, I think, I think. Um, uh, -bum -bum -bum. Hold on. I feel, okay, okay, yeah, I found it, I found it, sorry. Okay. I found it. How do I see the scores? Ah, yeah, here are details. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. So yeah, so I wasn't too, so the winner had 95 points. He was the player who had analysis paralysis and then two players were tied at 62 and then I had 53. So I mean, not terrible. I didn't lose by like a huge amount compared to the 62 scores. Okay, so anyway, that's enough about Weather Machine. I know I probably didn't tell you guys anything that you guys don't already know about this game because it's been on Kickstarter for quite some time and you've probably, if it's a game you're interested in, you've probably already watched playthroughs of it and like other people's reviews of it. Um, but yeah, so this is the review, I guess, of someone who had never played a Vital Lacerda game before and that's how I feel about it. So. Um, I do want to give it one more chance. I definitely do want to play it again, at least one more time. Um, so yeah, so that was Weather Machine. Let's go on to a game that I definitely understood, <laughs> Paris. Okay, so let's talk about Paris, which is designed by Michael Kiesling and Wolfgang Kramer. This is uh, published by Game Brewer. It came out in 2020 and it is for two to four players. So this is a table hog, um, so I don't think I can show you all the components, but like you just have like 
Paris, you have like the center, the Arc de Triomphe, and then around it, you have like the city of Paris, you're building buildings. So on your turn, there's like a variety of actions you can take. I can't remember how many actions you can take on your turn. Um, so yeah, you can, so you can either place a key on a bank or on the Arc de Triomphe, de Triomphe, you can move a key to purchase a building or take an end game tile, but that's only when all the um, piles of building tiles are empty. So the first thing you do is you place a building onto the board. So there's going to be like upside down buildings and you're going to place a building and then you will be able to take one of the actions and the keys. So you can place a key onto like uh, a bank or um, so each section of the board, I'll throw up a picture, but each section has like its own bank and like some of them will give you fewer coins, some of them will give you more. Um, and then there's the Arc de Triumph, and then you can move a key as one of your actions to a building to purchase that building um, for the cost, or you can, um, yeah. So it's a cool game, I liked it. Um, we messed up on the rules. I only, this was my first time playing it and we accidentally messed up. So like when we ran out of building tiles, we started just taking an end game tile and um, then taking one of the other two actions, which was to place a key or move a key to purchase a building. So we messed up in that way. So we shortened the game, but even though we shortened it, we still found the ending to be a little bit, um, what's the word? Oh, like, you know, one of the complaints about this game, I think, is, is that the ending just kind of drags on a little bit. Like the game just kind of, yeah, you just want it to kind of be over. Like you're just taking actions and it's just going on and on. I guess we felt that way, even though we ended up shortening the game because we ended up taking an end game tile at the beginning of our turn um, once all the building tiles were finished. Um, but other than that, I liked it. I think you can, um, you know, figure out what a good strategy is in this game as you're playing it, like whether you want to place a key on a bank or the arc, um, you know, there's a reason you might want to do that um, one as opposed to the other. Um, I do, 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 what else about this game? What else, what else? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a really pretty game. I think it's very pretty. <laughs> um, you know, the setup is, is not so bad. Um, Oh, there's bonus tiles. So yeah, the cool thing about this game is like you have this track around the board to get bonus tiles, but you can only move forward. You can't move back. So, you know, you may want to move ahead to get some bonus tiles and get like the one that you definitely really want. Um, so, you know, that's one thing um, that you can do um, in this game, which is cool. Um, you know, there's a little bit of competition there for the bonus tiles. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what else really to say about this. The end game scoring, um, you basically, you know, are going to look at which areas will score. So I think an area scores if it has, um, uh, da, da, da. I think you have to have a certain number of keys in an area for it to score. So like that becomes something that you start paying attention to. If I remember correctly, it has to have a certain number of keys in a sector for it to score. So there's different sectors and not all of them are going to score in the end. So that also makes it a bit interesting um, when you're playing to see how you might want to play. And then, you know, there's like majorities and, and how you score the different districts or sectors. Yeah, I really liked it. I thought it was really good. I like the bonus tiles. Um, I definitely want to play again. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let me check my notes and see if I had anything else to say about this. Um, no, I guess not. Sorry, I know my it's, it was a long time ago. It wasn't okay, maybe it wasn't that long ago, but I played this more than a week ago and my memory is just not very good right now. So, so I can't remember exactly how else I felt about it, but the components are nice and I don't have the deluxe edition. I have just the basic edition and it made me realize that, you know what, I don't need to get the deluxe edition for every game. I actually bought this at a ding and dent sale. So I got it for $19, which was amazing. Um, so yeah, definitely worth $19. If you can get Paris for $19, I'd say definitely go for it. Um, but yeah, here's the Arc de Triumph, which goes in the center of the board. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about this. I, if, you, if you've played this, tell me what you think. I really liked it. I don't understand like why we had to keep things hidden though. It's like that 
was kind of useless, I think. Like, didn't really serve a purpose, I feel like, to keep your money and stuff hidden behind a player screen like and I don't know if it's just the lighting in my apartment but it was like kind of dark and I was like yeah that just didn't seem necessary so yeah so that is Paris um I did not back the expansion on Kickstarter but I'd be curious to see what the expansion adds to this game but yeah here is what the board looks like set up yeah it's nice it's a nice game and I definitely intend on keeping it um, but yeah, that was here, so I'm gonna put that back. Okay, the next game I played was, um, I'm not, I have the box, but I'm not gonna bring it out because it is humongous. Uh, I think it's even bigger than the weather machine box. Yeah, it is. Uh, Magnate, the first city, which is designed by James Naylor, um, published by Naylor Games for one to five players. Um, so this is a 2021 game. So I'll throw up some pictures. So this is like super strategic advanced Monopoly. Um, that being said, I haven't played Monopoly since I was like a little kid. So I don't remember too much about it. But like in this game, you are basically building up buildings and you know, you want to sell those buildings before the market crashes. It's really interesting because the market is really influenced by what everyone is doing in the game. Um, so, you know, it, the way the game flows is kind of dependent on what people are doing and I think that's why it's like I would call it like a strategic kind of monopoly because you're trying to like you know uh, build buildings in like good sections of the city where you know you will get the most bang for your buck um, but yeah the market will start to crash and you want to sell your buildings before that happens I liked it I thought it was a really good game um, there are different types of buildings you can build. You can just watch my one minute overview video. I feel like I explained it pretty well in that just one minute, like what you can do and how the game works. Um, oh, I will mention that this game comes with a tutorial mode, which is really good. So we did the tutorial mode. So we played a four player game of it, but the tutorial mode has a fifth player dummy. Um, so you have like, you know, if you're playing, so you end up playing the full like five players during the tutorial mode to learn how the game is played and then once you finish the tutorial you can kick out the dummy players and then play it's a very good tutorial tutorial mode and i highly recommend it um if you want to learn the game and then once that is over when you start playing it like moves pretty quickly like you're you know you basically um i don't remember exactly what your actions are i don't have the rule book but like you you can like claim a land a piece of land or you can gosh i don't remember you can buy a building or yeah you can put down a building on some land that you already own you can like take out a loan and well not take out a loan you can like what's called consult so you can like consult and then get money basically it's not a loan um you can advertise, get some advertising tokens, which might help you when you're trying to bring in tenants. So different buildings can hold different amounts of tenants. But yeah, it's a strategic game. I liked it. Um, so if you, you know, have been in search of like a game that's like Monopoly, but way better than Monopoly, then I highly recommend Magnate the First City. And it has like really great miniature buildings in it and stuff. It is a big game. Um, like the box is huge, um, but actually the table like once it's actually set up on the table it's not like a huge table hog but the box is really big so yeah so i do recommend that game if you're into that kind of stuff um the next game we'll talk about i don't have with me is a small game and i actually ended up buying it it's called the shipwreck arcana um it came out in 2017 it's designed by Kevin Bishop, by published by Merrimorph Games for two to five players. It's like a cooperative deduction game. I liked it because like you have like different cards out and each player has numbers one through seven on tokens and you keep them upside down in front of you. And you're gonna draw two tokens from a bag and those two tokens are gonna have two different numbers on them. At the beginning, you draw two tokens. Then in subsequent turns, you'll end up drawing one token because you'll always have one in front of you so you're going to draw two tokens from the bag on your initial turn and you're going to put them down on like a card in front of one of the cards that is present and these cards say different things on them like one might say put down a token here if the sum of your two tokens is greater than seven or something like that one might say if you have tokens one two 
if you're if one of your tokens is a one two and three then place down the other token here or something like that so all the cards say different things and then the other players you can't um talk you know the person who's putting down the tokens can't talk then the other players are trying to deduce what numbers what number that person has left with them because um, the clock is ticking and you need to do this before time runs out so you know once a card like has a certain number of tokens in it it might get like flipped over and then like this time thingy like increases and so time is running out and you need to deduce people's numbers before time runs out and so you have one token that um, measures your progress and how you guys are doing in guessing people's numbers and then the other one is like the like the bomb that might go off or whatever i don't know what it was called so yeah it was a really fun game i liked it i liked you know usually i don't like cooperative games but this is like a cooperative deduction game and i thought it was good um, i really enjoyed it it's like a small game and i liked you know um you know for when you're really itching to do like a deduction game but you don't want to bring out something big like you don't want to do something like awkward guess or like cryptid or something like that or you know a deduction game that's more of like a hidden movement game like this is small it's very accessible i really liked it i liked the artwork on it i thought it was cool so i ended up ordering it from the publisher's website so, excuse me so yeah so that was the shipwreck shipwreck arcana 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 i don't know all right the next game i played was Brian Burrow, 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 uh, High King of Ireland, which is a 2021 game that is designed by Pierre Sylvester, published by Osprey Games for three to five players. So this is a trick-taking area majority and like hand management game. So I've played the King is Dead, which I have somewhere here, um, which is designed by the same designer, but I like this one so much better. Like. I don't know if you can really compare them because the king is dead is not really like a trick taking game i don't think it can be defined as that but this one it's cool because you are like given like some cards in the beginning and different cards have like different colors on them and different numbers and basically um the person who's the active player is going to pick a certain spot on the board and say that they want that location and that's what you guys are all like competing for so you're gonna that act, active player is going to put down a card first and then if you want to take the top action then you know of that card of a card then you need to play a higher number so whoever has the highest number gets to take the top main action of a card and everyone else gets to take the bottom half action but there are going to be instances where you want to take the bottom action of a card instead so you'll purposely play something lower and of course with like a trick taking game like this you know it's pretty cool and um, it reminded me a bit of like Witch's Brew, like when you are the active player, like you are kind of in a disadvantaged position because you're putting down a card first and you don't know if someone's going to have a higher card or a lower card. But in this instance, you know exactly how many cards are in the game and what the numbers are. So you can kind of start to deduce towards the end of the game what cards might come out. And, you know, so, but I really liked it. I thought it was really good. Unfortunately, the, um, end game scoring was not explained so i could have won had i known that you know there was like an end game uh point thing for having like a token in the most locations or like every location or something like that so i wasn't focused on that but um because i didn't know about that but i think i did pretty well in it i really liked it yeah so um i like trick taking games which are you know have more to them than just trick taking so like for example, Shamans by Cedric Chabussi, which is like a trick-taking and social deduction game. So this is like a trick-taking and area majority like influence game, which I thought was really good. So I really liked it a lot and I highly recommend it. I don't have it. I played with a friend's copy. So um, I would love to get a review copy of this if possible. That would be amazing because um, then I could like maybe do some content with it about it. So yeah, so that was um, Brian Boru. And yeah, if you haven't played his other game the uh the king is dead and if you were choosing between the two i would highly recommend this one over the king is dead um the next game we'll talk about is tinner's trail designed by martin wallace published by alley cat games for one to five players um so this was the second martin wallace game i've ever played the first being um brass birmingham which i'd played a number of times and i really suck at i always do really well in the canal era and then i tank during the rail era so this game is cool it's like an auction bidding game with like it's an economic game so you're um 
building or you're mining so there's different mines with different um so it's like uh, you're bidding on stuff but sometimes blind sometimes not blind so there's going to be different tiles put out in the different areas of um is it ireland i don't know scotland ireland i don't know what which location this is uh, so there's going to be different um mines put out and sometimes you're going to be bidding blindly sometimes you're not going to be bidding blindly so there are these tiles let me see if i can find them here we go yeah so at the beginning of the game a couple of them will be turned face up and then the rest will be face down and that will show you like what kind of resources you'll be able to mine from there and then each player will also have like a certain number of cards dealt to them and the cards can only be used with certain locations so you'll have a b c and like wild cards so, like this is an a card which can be used with an a location so like at the beginning so each card is going to have a cost at the bottom so if you are the one who's starting an auction you can reveal a card that goes with that location on the board before the auction starts so then you don't have to pay this cost and then everyone knows like okay whatever this tile ends up having on it it's going to produce one more orange and one more silver um, that's like copper aluminum and like water i think is uh yeah water so um but if you do not reveal the card then you're going to have to pay the cost if you end up winning the bid um, I think I'm remembering that correctly but yeah so sometimes you're going to be bidding on stuff without even knowing what's on the tile which could help you or hurt you um, but yeah it's an interesting game I really liked it um, I actually won <laughs> which was surprising um, I played against two of my friends who are super duper smart and I've only ever beaten them in one other game and so yeah so I felt pretty proud of myself because they're really really smart and these two friends they're brothers and they always like super analyze everything like they will like go through a full analysis before like taking a move and they're, they're like doing all this math in their head all the time and then after a game they like do so much math trying to figure out like oh if we had done this maybe maybe would have had this many more points if i'd done that and i'm just like it all goes over my head completely so whenever i beat them which is very very rarely it makes me feel really good so yeah so this is a really good game and it has like a time track which is like um, depending on which action you take you will be moving along on the time track and then whoever is farthest behind will get to take the action so yeah I mean you guys know what that kind of a time track looks like uh, there's water so there's going to be water in certain locations and I believe water is bad you have to pay extra or something water I can't remember exactly what it does but there's way to mitigate water in this game so you can like there's different things that you can try to get as part of your action as well. There are like these boats. Um, there are these these like um, adits or whatever. Um, well, adits like help you to get more resources after you've already mined a certain area. There are, gosh, what were they? There are these like some t kind of tokens which help you to get rid of water, which you definitely need in this game. But yeah it's a really good game i really liked it um i definitely oh yeah these things i think that's it pumps water pumps so you can get water pumps so you know it's really one of those and there's only a limited number of like adits and pumps and trains and boats so at the beginning you know of your turn uh you're always going to try to figure out what you want to do do you want to get more locations do you want to you know try and get an adit or a pump or whatever because you'll end up having to pay more um, when you mine if you have water in your location so you want to try to eliminate the water if possible and then after you mine a water cube always gets added back on um so yeah so i really liked it i thought it was a really good game and i definitely want to play again with the expansions so yeah so this is like the second edition of tinner's trail i think a first edition came out i don't know how many years ago but there's a first edition and this is the second edition so yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. Um, have you guys played this game? Let me know what you think. Um, I don't, I haven't played any other Martin Wallace games. I want to play London. I've seen his game called London, which looks good and I would like to try that sometime. Oh, does each player have a player board? Let me see. Um, what is this? No, that's not a player board. Oh yeah, let me show you this. This is what, which determines like how much of each thing there is. So like you'll see like this. 
So this will be on the main board and that will show you how many edits there are depending on player count, how many, um, like you can get an extra minor or whatever. Um, then there's like the trains and the boats and then the pumps. So yeah, this goes on the board. Yeah, so that is Tinner's Trail. The next game I'll talk about, I do not own, but it is called, actually I'm going to butcher this name, let's see, Zolkin, Zolkin, The Mayan Calendar by Simone Luciani and Daniel Tassini, published by Czech Games Edition for two to four players, and this came out in 2012. So this is the first Daniel Tassini game I've ever played. Um, I don't have any of his other games. I would like to try Tekunyu. Um, but yeah, so this was my first one. This came out like a long time ago, again, 2012. So it's a worker placement game. The interesting thing about this game is like, it's very simple, like in terms of what actions you can take. So you can either put out a worker or take back a worker. And you know, you can do that with multiple workers. So you have multiples of them and you can earn more workers throughout the game. So, you know, um, there's like these cool gears that like, interlock with each other and like each round you at the end of each round you move a gear and it affects the position of everything else and you know you will when you put down your workers you're going to be paying corn to put them down in certain areas if required and you're just basically trying to get resources it's kind of like an you know an engine builder in some ways i guess where you're just trying to get resources so that you can do more and more things throughout the game. Um, yeah, I thought it was a good game. I lost very, very badly. Um, there was a part of the board where I felt like not much was happening. Like, so on the side of the board, you have like these different tracks that you can go up on. Um, I felt like not much was happening there. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what a good winning strategy in this game is. It was my first time playing and I lost very, very badly. Um, so I don't, I don't know what a good strategy is in this game. I feel like I need to play it a couple more times before I figure that out. But yeah, I liked it. Um, you know, for my first Tassini game, I thought it was good and it, you know, his games, you know, I don't know what the rest of his games are like, but it didn't seem overly complicated and I, I really liked it and I thought it was a good game. So I'm definitely hoping to play more of his games. Um, yeah, um, we did not play with an expansion. Um, so yeah, so that was Zulkin, uh, the Mayan calendar. Um, if you've played it, tell me what you think. Um, if you've played any of his other games and Dobby wants to make an appearance, uh, tell me which of his other games you like and which ones you know you think are his best games. Um, so let's go on to, sorry, I feel like I did such a crappy job today in explaining games. Maybe I'm just tired. Okay, so the next uh, thing we can go to. Okay, Dobby, no one wants to see your button. Come on, here. All right, um, okay, Dobby, here, turn around. Show them your beautiful face. Okay, let's talk about games that I am backing. So the only games I am backing right now are Weather Machine at $1. <laughs> and then I backed this print and play um, called Voyages because it was only like four pounds. And I'm like, okay, you know, I can do that. Four pounds doesn't seem bad. It looks really pretty. The thing with print and plays is like, I like my games being like super high quality. This is print and play only by the way. So, you know, once it's delivered, I will um, maybe go to FedEx or something and have it printed there and then laminated or something. Um, yeah. So I'm not backing anything else. If you, you know, I don't know if the winter months are just slow or what, but if you guys are backing something, uh, just let me know what you're backing. Yeah, but I don't have anything else that's active at the moment. And let's see, I don't have any questions that were asked of me. So I guess um, we're just less than a week away now from PAX Unplugged. So I'm shooting this video on a Friday. And, no, Saturday. I don't know why I said Friday. Saturday, so PAX Unplugged starts officially from Friday, so less than a week away now. So I'm super excited about that. If there are any games you guys think I should check out at PAX, let me know and I'll try to play them so that I can talk about them in the next video. I definitely want to check out Corrosion that's published by Capstone Games. Let me see what else was on the first look section. Let me see if I can access that. Okay, Dobby. Let me see first i can't see my screen okay uh, da -da 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 -da. first look packs unplugged i can't type because dobby's blocking my view yeah okay let's see uh, okay here we go first look preview let me see if i can move this okay 
so it looks like there's a game called 1923 Cotton Club. Hmm, that looks interesting. Um, Anno 1800, which I think is published, is designed by Martin Wallace. Uh, there's some king game called Apogee. I don't know what that is. That looks interesting. The cover looks really cool. Let me see what that what that is. Do 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 do. Apogee. Apogee. So this is build your spaceship to complete objectives. Designed by Sergio Matsumoto. I don't know who that is. Um, published by DTDA Games. Well, that looks really cool. Yeah, maybe I'll add that to my list of games I want to try out. Oh, there's Azul's Queen, uh, Azul Queen's Garden. I definitely want to try that out um, because I do like Azul, the spring edition. I, you know, I have the spring edition and then the very original Azul. Uh, what else? Uh, Bitoku, I have that though. Boom Lake, I'd like to try out Boom Lake maybe. Um, oh, what's this? Canopia. Let's see what Canopia is. Canopia is designed by Anik Lobet, published by Blam. Save the Marvelous Birds of Celestia. Oh, I thought the artwork looked familiar. It looks like kind of like the Box of Celestia. It's a cooperative game that cleverly combines dexterity, memory, and strategic think strategical thinking. <laughs> strategical thinking. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's a push your luck and dexterity and memory, so I think I'm going to pass on that. Um, but it looks very pretty. A cape made by Thunderworks, which I have and I need to make a one minute video of, but that I like. So I'm probably going to, I own it, so I'm probably going to pass on that. A corrosion, which I want to try. Let's see. Uh, furnace will be in the first look section. I'm, I'm surprised that's going to be in the first look because it seems like everyone already has that game. Ooh, Golem. I definitely want to try Golem. So that is like high on my wish list. So that's going to be in the first look section. And that is designed by uh, Simone Luciani, Virginio Gigli, Gigli, and uh, Flaminia Brassini and published by Cranio Creations. I definitely want to try um, Golem. So I really like Simone Luciani's games, so I definitely need to put that on my list. Oh, Hippocrates published by Game Brewer. Maybe I should try that out. Uh, I don't know if I'll have time to play all of these games. Let's see. Oh, oh there's a game called Lisbon Tram 28. That looks cool. Kind of like the artwork on the cover. What else is there? Let's go to page two. Page two. Ooh, Living Forest. I definitely want to try out Living Forest. Um, I have a friend who went to Essen and she really liked it. Um, so that is designed by Ask Christiansen, published by Ludonat. Um, so yeah, it's, it looks really pretty. Oh, it's got a bit of pusher luck. So it's a deck building bag deck bag and pool building push your luck simultaneous action selection tile placement game hmm. so it says you play as a nature spirit who will try to save the forest and its sacred tree from the flames of onibi it's very pretty i would like to try that out so that i think i'll put high on my list um luna capital is on here um i have that i really love it um so i won't play that over there since i have it um da -da -da -da. Oh, Mortem, Medieval Detective. That looks cool. What else? Station Fall. Um, one of Tassini's new games, Tabanusi, Builders of Ur. I might want to try that. That looks cool. Oh, the Night Cage. Maybe I should play that. My brother-in-law has the Night Cage. We were planning on playing it during Christmas. So maybe I can learn how to play it because I don't think he'll be learning the rules. Ooh, Stella Dixit Universe. So this looks cool. It's like using the Dixit cards, but it's a different kind of like uh, more competitive game, I think, than Dixit. I, that would be fun to get. Uh, what else? Do, 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 do. Ooh, Welcome to the Moon. I definitely want to get that while I'm at PAX Unplugged. I've heard Witchstone is good. I don't know much about it, but maybe I can try that out. Yeah, I wonder if these games will be for sale because I definitely want to buy Welcome to the Moon. I wonder if that has a solo mode too. Let's see. It does. Cool. It's like 
the same designer as Welcome To, but this one's the moon, which looks really cool. The sheets look really pretty. Uh, I love it. And it has like a campaign mode, I think. So I definitely want to get Welcome To The Moon. Definitely need to do that. Speaking of which, I should probably try to play Moon and Capital solo since it does have a solo mode. And I really liked it. Yeah, so I know this video sucked, you guys. And I just babbled on and on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hopefully the next video will be better. But yeah, I guess I don't have much else to talk about. Um, so I guess I can talk about some TV shows I've been watching. So I watched, what have I been watching recently? Um, I started Dexter New Blood. Um, I was a huge fan of the original Dexter seasons one through four. And then after season four, it just sucked so bad. And I don't even want to think about the season finale of the series finale of Dexter, but I'm, I've really been enjoying uh, New Blood. I think it's good. And I started this series called Yellow Jackets. I cannot watch horror um, typically because I live alone and I'm prone to nightmares and I get really scared. So there are a lot of good TV shows which I've heard are really good that I don't end up watching because they are classified as horror, like The Haunting of Hill House. Like I cannot watch that. I tried, I tried and it took me like four different like nights days to get through episode one because I got so scared so I've been watching yellow jackets and I would say there are some scary parts in it so I just close my eyes and try to look away and there are also just very gory parts in it so do not eat while you're watching yellow jackets highly recommend you do not eat while watching it so that you know show is really interesting and good so far what else have I been watching I watch a lot of tv so I finished some series recently trying to remember what did I finish recently hmm. I don't know I'm always posting on Facebook and Twitter about what I'm watching and I can't remember I had finished something else recently which I really liked but now I don't remember let me see let me go on Facebook maybe that will remind me blah 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 let's see do 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 um, ba -da -ba -bum -bum. Do, 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 do. Um, I can't find it. Oh yeah, duh, obviously. I know what I had finished recently, The Mandalorian. Okay, <laughs> so I think that was the last thing I watched before these shows. No, I think I had watched some other stuff too. I watch a lot of TV and I can't remember what I watched after The Mandalorian now, but I'm pretty sure I had watched something else. Gosh. I should start making a list of all the stuff I watch because I feel like I have a bad memory and I can't even remember what I watched like a week ago. Mm. Oh well. Anyway, so yeah, I apologize for a very crappy video, but there we go. I did it. <laughs> so um, yeah, um, after PAX Unplugged, hopefully I'll have a number of games, new games to talk about. Um, I don't know if I'll have them in my possession, but I will throw up pictures hopefully. But yeah, if there are any games you would like for me to check out, please let me know and I will try to check them out there. And again, if you're going to be at PAX Unplugged, you know, find me. I will have like my little Grogu um, with me. I'll have my Grogu backpack and you guys have seen my lanyard in the last video. So yeah, I'm planning on arriving on Thursday and uh, going to that media event on Thursday night and then hopefully getting there super early on Friday. I plan on picking up my badge on Thursday since I will have early pickup available. So hopefully I will get to do that. So yeah, super excited for PAX. I will try to take pictures and stuff and uh, post them on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Um, what else? Yeah, I guess that's it. Um, again, apologies for a not so great video this week. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. And hopefully I will be back in two weeks since next weekend is PAX Unplugged. Um, so hopefully I'll be back in two weekends with uh, games to talk about. So until next time, guys. Bye. <laughs>